Dinosaurs eat man, woman inherits the earth. Yes, besties, today we're going to be talking about Jurassic Park and how Dr. Alan Grant is low-key the child-free character that I've been sleeping on for the past 30 years. No kids for me, thanks. Recently, the new Jurassic World Dominion came out, right? And because of that, if y'all don't already know, look at my tattoo. If you did not already know, I am a huge Jurassic Park fan. I have been obsessed with the original 1993 Jurassic Park since I was probably six or seven years old. I don't know. When I heard that the new Jurassic World Dominion was coming out, you know I had to go see it. And we went and we saw it. Now, because we were going to go see this new movie, we spent the last like week or two binge watching all of the other five movies, starting with the original Jurassic Park. And let me tell you, when I rewatched this movie for the upteenth time, literal probably 10,000th time that I've seen this movie, it occurred to me, oh my God, Dr. Grant is child free. Holy shit, how have I never actually thought about this before? So let's talk about it. In the first movie, there's a scene at the beginning where Dr. Alan Grant and Dr. Ellie Sadler are walking up a hill together, boop, 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 and Ellie asks Alan, what's so wrong with kids? And Dr. Grant's like, oh, you know, they're, they're noisy, they're, they're messy, they smell, and she's like, they do not smell. And he's like, some of them smell, babies smell. And I'm like, oh my God, he doesn't like kids. They annoy him. He thinks they're smelly. This is great. And I'm like, I, this is why I've loved this movie. I've like, of course I've connected with this movie since I was a wee lass because I've never liked kids. He was a character that openly said bad things about children in a movie. Oh my God, I love it, you know? So then, y'all have seen the movie. You know what happens. They get to the park and John Hammond's two grandchildren show up and they're not super young. They're like what, like 10 and 12 or something like that. I don't know how old they are, but they're not like little, little kids, right? But Ellie literally tells these kids to try and hang out with Dr. Grant and like harass him and, and glue to his side because by, um, what's her name? By Lex's admission, Ellie said it would be good for you. So it's like, Ellie, stop trying to push these kids on Dr. Grant. Like if he doesn't wanna hang out with these kids, don't make him. And ultimately, y'all know, he does not end up in the car that goes to the park with, with the kids, right? I just think it's interesting because like the movie does a very good job of like trying to frame Dr. Grant as like this hardened, like doesn't like kids, kind of moody, almost irresponsible, like needing to be fixed kind of character and somehow being around children is going to fix him and like Ellie, his friend, is trying to help him by forcing these kids on him. Moving on, obviously later in the movie, you know the Tyrannosaurus gets out. The um, lawyer leaves the kids in the car by themselves and then the Tyrannosaurus starts attacking the car and who jumps into action before anyone else, right? Other than Dr. Alan Grant, which is also interesting to me because you learn that Dr. Ian Malcolm, who is also with Dr. Grant, has a bunch of kids and he's always on the, on the hunt for the next ex-Mrs. Malcolm, as he says. So it's like this dude who's, who's a dad is sitting over here watching these kids get attacked and he's just like frozen, right? But the guy who doesn't have kids is like, we gotta do this, we gotta, we gotta help him, right? And I wonder, if this was real life, obviously this is a movie, if this was real life, would Ian be less likely to help uh, Lex and Tim because he's like selfishly thinking, well, I can't put myself in danger because of my kids. Whereas Dr. Grant doesn't have any 
anything to lose, even though obviously he would. He doesn't have that like thought and he said like, oh, I can't die because I have this person, this person to take care of, right? So he's able to act more selflessly, whereas Ian acted super selfishly in that moment. Just something to think about, you know. So obviously from that point on in the movie, uh, Dr. Grant gets, you know, stuck with taking care of Lex and Tim and he saves them multiple times from certain dino death, which proves that just because he is child free and said at the beginning of the movie that some kids smell and are messy and loud or whatever, just because he's not like super fond of kids and doesn't have any kids, it doesn't mean that he's just this evil, child-hating troll who was gonna let the T-Rex eat the children. And like, he doesn't even act like he's very fond of kids, yet he still saved them and kept them safe until the end of the movie. So, as y'all know, Dr. Alan Grant does not show up again until Jurassic World 3. In that movie, as you know, he is enlisted, tricked into, really, helping these parents save their child who has wound up on a dino island. It is what it is. But I also think it's interesting to note that yet again, the writers decided, hey, let's make sure the child-free guy is the one who saves the kid because based off Jurassic World 3, we know that Dr. Grant is still not married and still does not have children. So he is still child-free. We're gonna switch gears a little bit, just like a side little tangent that I wanted to point out. Jurassic World 1. Jurassic World. The main character, Claire, there was just a moment that I just, I had to take note of. Claire is talking to her sister who is named Karen of all names. And Karen tells Claire when you have kids one day. And Claire says, if. Karen insists on when. And it was just like a super annoying moment. And I'm like, they literally, Jurassic World made Claire to be the like badass career woman who didn't need a man, didn't need kids, but she was obviously the character who was blinded by her ambition and didn't have a soul. Like that's the kind of character they made Claire out to be which is important to keep in mind. So that brings us to Jurassic World 3, Jurassic World Dominion, okay? I was very excited about this movie because I was genuinely excited to see, are they going to leave Dr. Grant unmarried and child-free or are they gonna f it up? Because you know how mainstream media is, they always gotta do something to make people more appealing, right? Which would completely ruin his character for me if they did that. I would refuse to believe it was canon. That's an, doesn't matter. Okay, and also, I just have to tell y'all this quick story about actually going to see Jurassic World Dominion, okay? This is a dinosaur movie. It is loud. There are jump scares. There are scary dinosaurs. It's not a movie for little kids. But let me tell you, I even put, put this in my Instagram story. If you don't already, go follow me on Instagram and you'll get to see this stuff firsthand. But in my Instagram story, I was very excited because we were the only ones in the theater. It was, it was like 1.30 on a Tuesday, okay? Right after posting that, these people came in with their four-year-old. They literally brought a very small, wee little girl into this theater to watch Jurassic World. And I was like, great this is gonna go terribly, right? So then it gets worse. I didn't put this in my Instagram story, so you're hearing it here first, folks. A whole slew of children. It was like two grown women and like literally five or six younger kids, probably like maybe fifth or sixth grade, come into the theater. They're noisy, they're loud, they're crinkling their wrappers. And then who else comes in? Someone with a infant baby cannot even like walk on its own or do anything. Like it's being held. The movie starts getting loud. <coughs> Baby noises everywhere. And I'm like, son of a f 
in, bitch. Remove your spawn out of this movie. Like, I do not want to hear baby noises in the middle of the Tyrannosaurus screaming. And it just goes back to the fact that you try to go to places where you think children won't be, and they're being there because parents are idiots. They're entitled. They think everything is for kids, even when it's not. It's funny though, the lady with the baby, I think she left once and then she came back in and then I could literally see her out of the corner of my eye standing there holding her baby bouncing it back and forth through most of the two and a half hour long movie and I'm like wow bitch better you than me absolutely not would I ever want to deal with that luckily none of the children got like super loud and super disruptive at any point. It wasn't so much that it really ever ruined the movie for me, but it was mildly annoying. So I feel like I got pretty lucky with that one, especially with the fucking baby. Well, halfway through the video, you know what that means. If you're enjoying this, leave a like down below and help this video spread to more people. Near the beginning of the movie, we are reintroduced to Ellie Sadler, who we already knew from previous movies, got married, and had two children. Boo. Like I said, I loved Ellie in the first one because she was unmarried. She didn't have children. She was just like doing her career. She was all about plants. She was digging in dinosaur shit. And then by the third movie, they ruined Ellie's character for me. So whatever. Ellie goes to see Dr. Grant. And we find out that Dr. Grant is still living his best life, digging up bones in whatever desert he's in. And then Ellie starts going on and on about how, you know, her kids are in college now. She got divorced from her husband and she was finally able to go back to her work. And it's just her now and she feels so free. I'm like, wow, no shit, Ellie. You could have just done that for the last 30 years if you just wouldn't have had to have kids. You could have done so much research and discovered so much stuff and helped the planet and your universe so much if you just would have had kids. But then it was interesting because during this conversation, Dr. Grant makes the, makes the comment that, oh, well, it can get lonely. I'm like, no, don't do Dr. Grant like this. Don't make him out to be just this lonely, sad old man because he never got married and had kids. And it's like, I didn't like that they left it out to interpretation because I know that a lot of people are going to interpret that as Dr. Grant is sad because he never had children with Ellie. Whereas I took it as he is sad because he's been in love with Ellie for 30 years and he still is not with her and he never dated anyone else or never married anyone else because he loves Ellie, right? Anyway, whatever. So then later in the movie, there's another part where they meet up with Ian Malcolm and he, he says that he has five kids and that they're all older now. And then he looks at Dr. Grant and says, oh, do you have a family? And Dr. Grant's like, no. And it's like so annoying because you obviously know what Ian means is do you have kids? Because that's all this man cares about. And it's so annoying because it's like, why do we keep doing this? Why do we keep, why do we keep putting this shit in movies? And it's like, I get that it's, it's part of Ian's character to be insufferable, but it's just like, why do we keep doing this shit in movies? And it also was just funny to see like such a real world thing happen in such a fantastical world at this point where people literally think you don't have a fucking family at all just because you haven't had kids. It's ridiculous. So by the end of the movie, my dreams finally came true and Dr. Grant and Ellie finally get together. They finally become the couple that they should have been at the end of Jurassic Park in 1993. <laughs> but I do have to talk about Claire just a little bit more. You remember I said Claire in the first one was like this, you know, boss babe, career woman, don't need no man. She didn't know how to interact with her nephews. She was very much not maternal, whatever, right? And that didn't bother me. 
But I also knew that they were making her that way on purpose as a character flaw, not as just her character. They used those things about her to signify a character flaw, which I thought was just cheap and shitty and so f***ing overdone, it's ridiculous. Claire becomes Mama Bear Claire to their kidnapped slash adopted clone child. And um, yeah, Claire becomes a mom, an adopted mom. It's really annoying and it's just like, oh, cool. How original, make the damaged unmaternal woman of the series become a mama bear. Great writing, love that. But honestly, Jurassic Worlds, <laughs> the Jurassic World movies, honestly, if they never even existed, I would give two shits less. Um, I didn't think that any of the Jurassic Worlds were like, woo, like really great. Um, none of the movies after Jurassic Park will ever be able to even touch the magic that is Jurassic Park. Don't at me, we're not even gonna argue about it. <laughs> So yes, that is my spiel about um, the Jurassic Park slash Jurassic World universe and the child-free themes within. Um, let me know what you thought about the newest Jurassic World if you've seen it or if you haven't seen it and you just love Jurassic Park. Let me, just, just talk to me about how much you love Jurassic Park and just how much you love Dr. Grant and how much you love Jurassic Park Ellie. I just... That movie's so good. I love it so much. It's my favorite. And I love this shirt. And there's a little dinosaur on the shirt somewhere. They hide. Where are they? Oh, here's one on my shoulder. Look how cute that is. Is that not adorable? I got this shirt from Hot Topic and I'm obsessed. Yes, I'm about to be 29 and I still get things from Hot Topic. You can't stop me. I hope you enjoyed this movie deep dive with me. And if there are any other movies, new or old, that I need to watch or rewatch through the child free beer goggles, if you will, let me know down in the comments below and I will do that for you. Links in the description to my Instagram and my merch store. And I will see you in the next one. Okay, bye.